Well, I was I was going to get back to work on that uh, segmented salad bowl that I've been working on, but I was commissioned to do a custom snowman by uh, a repeat customer and one of my viewers who also happens to be a very accomplished make them who also happens to be a very accomplished crafter. I'm talking about Jackie Burns. And her channel is Jackie Burns Creations. And I'll put a link to that right up here. So go check Jackie out. She does some really, really nice stuff. And I, I think you might enjoy it. So without further ado, let's get over the lathe and get this thing spinning. Okay, I'm going to sand this in reverse. Got my dust collector on.
Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna take this off, put it in the chuck, and then I'll reshape the head when I come back. Okay, I've got it in the chuck. It's running smooth. So now I'll start taking the top of the head off and rounding it up nicely. I'm gonna leave my tail stock up as long as I can. Okay, that's round enough. Now we'll sand her up. And I'll go through the grits just like I did on the body, so you don't need to see that. I, I know it's hard to see from this angle, but I leave a little collar here that's about a quarter of an inch wide between the body and the head. And I do that on purpose so that when I put the scarf on, it doesn't bunch up so bad into a into a hard V where the two would come together. So I leave a space that's about a quarter of an inch wide uh, in between the two. It's all sanded. Now I'm going to part it off and start on the hat. I'm talking to you and talking to you and I wasn't recording. Okay, <clears throat> so here's where we are. I I roughed this round between centers and then, <clears throat> and I purposefully didn't record that. I put a tenon on one end, I chucked it up, After, but before I did that I took it over the bandsaw. I cut these slots in it, four of them to give me eight uh, sections. I'm basically going to turn this into a collet chuck. So I'm going to hollow this out. I measured the head. Uh, this is the diameter of the head of the snowman. I did that so that I can put the snowman in here, clamp this around the head. It won't hurt it or mar it. And then I can finish off the bottom of the snowman. That's the plan. So I need to hollow this out so that I'll put a band clamp around here once I get the snowman in and I make this big enough to fit the head. I just want it to be, I want it to be snug going in, so I don't want this hole to be too big, and let's press on. So I'm gonna drill this out in stages using my Forstner bits. Got it. I'm doing it in stages so it's easier on the easier on me and easier on the bits. Got him out, except for drilling the holes for the arms, which I'll do over on the workbench, and turning the hat. This guy's about done, other, except for the painting and decorating. So that's the rough body. I don't remember what this wood is, but it's pretty. It's also wormy. It's spalted, I believe. Oh, I, that, I do know what this is. I believe it's hickory. Oops. Okay, I will flatten this in, put my tin in here, and then start making my hat. Make my tin in here. I want this to be the bottom.
I need my dust collector on. That hickory's really dry. I'm done. That's two hat brims I've destroyed because I'm getting in a hurry because this has taken me so long because of it's not that difficult to project. It's been taking me a long time because I've, I've, I've had to be other places and can't be in the shop and I'm frustrated and I'm trying to rush so that I can get this out. And when I get to that point, it's time to stop and and reassess and reevaluate come back at it another time so i'll be back okay i glued a piece of pear onto this because this hickory was just too pretty to lose and this will be a little more stable because it's the the grain runs this way instead of this way so i'm going to go ahead and round this up and then i will part this off because this thing is ready to sand over here. So I'll, I'll round this up and I will part this off a little thick and uh, hollow the inside of the hat to fit. And we'll go from there. I'm not done. I was going to have before. Thank you for coming. Perfect. Got the hat, the top of the hat all sanded nice and smooth. This is all sanded. The brim is all sanded. And this will be the front. And I'm going to cock the hat a little bit, but it'll sit pretty much like this. So it'll be cocked a little bit forward and a little bit to the left. That's just because I like it that way. Sometimes I'll do it this way. Sometimes I'll, it, it just depends. Now what I'm, I need to do is I need to mark and drill the holes for the arms. And while I'm at it, I will do the nose, the hole for the nose, because I'm gonna, I, I make one of those two out of a, either a, a bamboo skewer or a 
16th inch or 8th inch dowel and we'll go over to the bench and we'll finish this up. Now it's time to decreate. Decreate. To decorate this here snowman. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color my my little carrot orange and I usually just use Sharpie for this. Uh, one of the things I like about using the Sharpie is it's not painted so it's not really covering up any of the wood grain that might be in this and you can see there are some. It actually looks more like a natural carrot. So now I can glue the nose in. I will paint the eyes on uh, just because it gives it a little more facial expression. And I've already trimmed the arms. Sometimes I ship these with the arms glued in. Sometimes I don't. It depends on whether or not I think I can keep it safe. And I think I might be able to pack this one uh, so that it's safe. So that Jackie doesn't have to glue the, the arms in. I got one coming down and one coming up just so it doesn't look like he's saying field goal or touchdown. So I will glue these in and I will carefully pack them up. And I will glue the nose in. But first, I need to put the mouth on and I need to find some buttons, cold buttons. So what I usually use for cold buttons are just little pieces of bark that are left over from what I've been turning. Because these pieces have a tendency to throw bark all over the place. And very often, the natural look of the bark looks very much like coal. And I'm just kind of rounding the edges off a little bit, making it look more coalish. And again, I get my black marker, not the orange. You don't see orange coal. So I just take my black marker and roughly go over this to blacken it up some. If you've ever seen real coal anthracite, a lot of it is really, really black, but a lot of it isn't. And it, it's got kind of brown flecks in it. So this technique works quite well because it doesn't fully cover all of the bark, but it doesn't really have to. It just has to disguise it a little. Now how you glue your buttons on is pretty much up to you. You can use CA, you can use hot glue, you can use wood glue. It's really not going to make much difference. I always use wood glue on the nose when I'm gluing it in. So let's get a little patch on the nose real quick. <clears throat> and I like to glue the nose in first so that I get a more central line on the front when I'm doing the buttons. I will probably use thick CA on these cold buttons just so it'll dry a little bit faster and I don't have to wait when I get into decorating. Wipe any excess glue off from around the nose. And you always want to be careful in your work area that you don't throw your pieces on the floor because in the messy studio you'll probably never find them. <clears throat> what I'm doing now is I'm just setting up a, a place to lay him and I'll, I'll adjust the camera so it's easier for you to see. I just want to hold it here. I'm going to put him on this mat and I want to hold it so that he doesn't roll when I'm putting the buttons on. Let me get you in a better position. Now I'll figure out which button I want where. I like to put the biggest one in the middle, uh, next to the biggest down on the bottom, and the smallest on top, just for perspective. And I like to do the, the middle one first, because I put it relatively central. little accelerator to speed the process and there your buttons are glued on I use the black string for the mouth
and I'll just set that dry. I'll let that sit and dry for a little bit. I don't want to use accelerator on it because I want it to cure more naturally. I have some faux leather cord that I use for the hat band on the hat. And this is where the woodworker turns crafter, at least my wife says because I do this sort of thing that makes me a crafter. <laughs> I've never considered myself a I do consider myself a wood artist and I guess this is part of the artistry, I don't know. I just think it looks cool when you decorate them. Need a good contrast in color for the hat rib. The ribbon goes on the hat. You, you don't want to use the the, the the beige or the khaki. The gray, not so much. The dark brown, there's already some of that. There's already some black too, but I think to, for the natural colors in the hat, I'm going to go with brown. So I will cut a piece of this roughly to length. I use uh, all kinds of things for my snowmen, like depending on what the customer wants. I'll use ribbon. I've got some ribbon. I'll use cloth, actual cotton cloth material. I buy cutoffs at Walmart when I see something that looks good. Uh, and I just I just buy the cutoffs for a dollar or two. And then I've got enough cloth to make hundreds of snowmen. But Jackie said she likes sky blue, maroon, and red, I believe. This little piece here has a burgundy and a sky blue in it. And there, you got the hat band on and the feather. But I like to go a little bit further on my hats, if I can, sometimes. And another little embellishment. I've got a, it was a, a charm from, I don't know, for something. And it says live. And that's one of my three things, live, laugh, love. So here's the hat. Got some little flowers on one side and my little emblem. And, and then there's the feather. So the hat is done. I need to paint the eyes. And I will do that after I go. I'm going to take the scarf up and I'm going to iron it and I'll be back. I've ironed my scarf and I've trimmed the edges. So, and I've got it tied around. Okay, the scarf looks good. So I'm going to hit the knot with a little super glue just to set it. Something else I do is I glue the scarf down in one spot so that it sticks up. So I've got the scarf glued down with hot glue on each side just so that it kind of sticks up. You can see where it sticks up over here and over there. Now I gotta paint the eyes on and then glue the hat on and we are done. I'm just using acrylic paint. First I go in with the black. and determine where I want them. Now we'll let that dry for a few minutes. Since I couldn't burn my logo in, I'm going to have to hand sign this. I know that breaks Jackie's heart. Okay, it's signed. Only two things left to do. Glue the hat on and let it sit overnight and cure. And then tomorrow, shoot it with a couple of quick coats of finish. <clears throat> let that dry and then I can send it to you, Jackie. So let me get this baby glued on real quick. Okay, all done. Tomorrow I will come back and spray some finish on it. And I will get this off in the mail to you, Jackie. So thank you very much again. I appreciate it. 
I didn't realize until I boxed this up and sent it off that I never shot the outro. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, share. Y'all come back and see us here at the Missy Studio. Thanks. And remember, live, laugh, and love.